This is the 10th Viola de Gamba tutorial, uh, this time sponsored by two of my uh, Patreons, Anne and Gregor. Um, and both of them would like to uh, learn a bit more about playing fast notes. Um, Gregor would like to be able to use more articulation, um, whereas Anne wants to be able to play a little bit uh, more smoothly. Um, so I'm, I'm going to break this tutorial into, th into three sections, uh, smooth playing, uh, uh, articulate playing, and um, some tips on how to practice and learn uh, fast passages. Um, one of the things I, I see very, very often in, in lessons um, is players uh, bring, bring a, a fast passage to me that they're having trouble with. And um, uh, I ask them to demonstrate it, and they, they often play right at the tip of the bow. Um, so they'll, they'll try and play everything right up here. Um, and there's this sort of um, assumption that because generally gamba players use the sort of upper half of the bow, uh, more than cellists do, for example, who tend to use more of the heel, um, that, that that means that you know even the fast passages should be right at the tip. The problem with this is that um, you end up moving the whole arm an awful lot, especially when you change strings, because you have more of a gap here. Um, so if I play just a scale... There's, there's a lot of motion that is unnecessary. Um, so in order to get around that, um, we can actually play, or at least feel free to play, closer to the middle of the bow, or even towards the frog. Um, this isn't, we don't necessarily always want to play um, further further up the, the bow, um, but it can be useful. So if you're having trouble with a, with a difficult passage, first of all, see to what extent you're playing right at the tip of the bow. So to start with, let's look at um, playing uh, fast passages smoothly. And for this, I'm going to use um, uh, an excerpt from one of Arbel's unaccompanied pieces. It's from a, a sort of suite composed for the Lady Pembroke. Um, I'll put some excerpts on the screen. Uh, and this excerpt's good because it's uh, it has uh, conjunct and disjunct motion. Um, so we can sort of look at how we might um, approach playing playing this set this section uh, in different ways. So if we're going to play smoother. Um, I think it's probably okay for us to use the upper part of the bow towards the tip. Um, it'll also mean using um, a little bit more bow than we would if we wanted to play very short. Uh, if you use a very small amount of bow, then you're going to exaggerate the, um, the bounce of the bow, uh, and by its nature it will sound short, the notes will sound shorter and more articulate. Um, so let's, let's just experiment with, with playing this passage uh, a little bit more smoothly. So I'm using a little bit more bow than I might otherwise, uh, and I'm staying towards the, the tip of the bow. Um, it's very important that uh, you maintain a, a, a relaxed wrist for this process. We're still moving with the arm uh, rather than sort of flicking individually with the, with the wrist. We, we don't really ever do that. Um, but if you tense your whole arm and your wrist, uh, then, well, it makes it more articulate, but it also makes it very difficult to control. It'll cause you pain and uh, the sound suffers. So it, I'll try and demonstrate what that might sound like. if. This is with a very stiff arm. Um, it's, it's just not doable. You, you lose track of things. Um, so instead, we're just doing um, a, a reduced motion of the full bow stroke. Uh, we're moving with the forearm and allowing the wrist to, to, to wobble uh, in its role as the car's suspension, as I mentioned in the earlier video. Um, and actually, that having that relaxed wrist will help you smooth the joins between uh, fast notes. When we change strings, uh, so there's a, a moment here where we, uh, towards the beginning, we go and then we have a really big string change between the E and the top G. Um, if we want to make those smooth, um, 
which I think we do in this situation. We want to have a sense of this continuing um, uh, flow of uh, semiquavers or 16th notes. Um, there are, again, a couple of things we can do. Just like with a slow moving part, um, we need to make sure that we're, we're not stopping the bow on the string when we change between strings. Um, so we need to use the, the bow's inertia to propel ourselves onto the, onto the next string. And you can hear that both strings are still ringing. Um, so again, I'm pushing my hand forward to reach the, the upper string and pulling it back again uh, to, to uh, hit the lower string. Um, this all needs to be done in one smooth motion. So I'm going forward, backward, forward, backward, forward, backward, while also moving from side to side. And it's exactly the same motion as uh, if you were to play slowly. Um, it's just sped up. The other thing that can help um, is keeping your fingers down. If I try and lift my fingers off between uh, these uh, string crossing uh, sections of this fast passage, then things immediately start to sound messy. It's actually really hard to do. Um, whereas if we keep the string, the um, fingers down, the, the resonance created um, covers the joins between uh, the bow strokes. If we're going to play this same passage with more articulation, then almost the opposite of everything I've just said applies. We want to try and play uh, shorter bow strokes further towards the middle of the bow, um, because this is where we have most weight with the arm, or at least where the, the arm weight is most immediately available to the, to the, to the fingers and the hair of the bow. Um, and we also need to make sure that we feel the contact between the middle finger on the hair and the string. Um, every note should feel plucked, and it can often feel like you uh, are, have your finger directly on the hair and you're pulling and pushing. Again, this is just like playing um, a regular um, uh, slow passage, but sped up. We just need to be really um, aware of that contact. And remember, it's the bow that makes the sound. Even when we're playing fast, um, and the left hand is working harder than it would normally, it's this thing that you have to uh, be conscious of, but we'll get to that in a minute. So uh, to approach this passage with a more articulate um, uh, uh, sound, um, I'm going to try playing closer to the uh, middle of the bow uh, with shorter bow strokes, uh, and we'll see what happens. <laughs> So we can hear the beginning of each note much more clearly uh, with that manner of playing. And playing closer to the bridge, really do, closer to the middle of the bow, really does make it much easier to, to dig into the beginning of the string and, and, and let the, the note sort of ping. Uh, and that initial pluck really is the middle finger. So again, we're relaxed at the wrist, moving with the arm, but there's a little bit more engagement with the middle finger on the hair. Um, so that we can pluck the string as we go. In order to bring uh, a fast passage up to a speed that you're happy with, um, there are a couple of things we can do. One of them is extremely boring, although ultimately rewarding, um, and that is to use a metronome to practice the section um, very slowly and gradually crank the tempo up until you've reached your, your target speed. The benefit of this is that it programs the left hand to, to play without you having to think about it. it. It programs your muscle memory. Because ultimately, when you're playing something very fast, you don't actually want to have to think about your left hand. You, you want to be able to think about your bow, uh, how you're phrasing the section, um, and how you're articulating it, in fact. So here's what this might look like. I've got my, my metronome on my phone here. I'm going to take this passage, and um, I'm going to set the tempo at uh, crotchet equals uh, 50. So it's very slow, the piece is in two. Uh, so it's gonna make things very easy for me. Um, 
before you do this, by the way, it's a good idea to have looked through it and to figure out what sort of fingerings you, you it looks like you're going to need to be able to play a passage. Um, it doesn't mean you have to stick to them. And in fact, as you get faster, you may find that um, you need to change your fingerings to, to accommodate the, the faster speed. So here we go. So I'm happy with that. I got all of my notes. I felt comfortable. So the next step is, well, I tend to, to increase the speed by five points. So I'm at 50s now, quarter equals 50. So I'm going to go up to quarter equals 55. It doesn't feel like much of a speed increase, but that's a good thing. <laughs> Again, I was happy with that, uh, and so on. You carry on in that manner until you reach a speed um, that you think is, is, is fast enough. And in fact, what I tend to do uh, in difficult passages is to practice um, at least 10 points faster than I, need, so, than I need to, so I can play it faster than I'm actually going to need to play it. Uh, it just provides extra security. While you're doing this, it's a good idea to um, to consider how it is you, you want the notes to, art, to be articulated so that you can build in that articulation as you play slowly and gradually faster. I mentioned that this whole process allows you to forget about your left hand so that you can concentrate on your right. Uh, and that's another trick um, to playing uh, uh, fast notes. Um, if you, I often find that people, um, students tend to, to be too absorbed with their left hand when they're playing. Um, and it means that often, by the way, they don't need to be, their, their left hand is often perfectly fine, um, knows where to go, hits all the right notes, but still there's uh, this sense of them playing like, like this, you know, with, with total absorption into the left hand. Uh, and then um, if, if I suggest, well, maybe forget about this and just try a version where all you think about is the bow, most most often it, it, it massively improves things. So um, I, I'd encourage you not to be too uh, focused on the left hand and to try and uh, focus more on, on the bow if you possibly can. This brings us to the end of the 10th Gamba tutorial. Um, thanks to Gregor and Anne for uh, commissioning it. If you'd like to commission uh, a video, um, consider subscribing to my Patreon account. It's patreon.com forward slash Sam Statlin. Uh, that'll allow you to uh, commission a new video uh, every month and also gives you access to my Music Minus One collection of video and audio recordings. Um, and um, yeah, it'd be great to have you as a subscriber. Um, for now, I will say goodbye and see you in the next video.